Hey everybody, welcome back to Vanland. The new Incline 2.0 water heater is here. And today I wanna to show you guys all the features of the new Incline water heater, as well as how to install it. The main new design consideration is that it's now a cylindrical design versus the rectangular design. That allows there to be a higher pressure rating capacity. It is now rated up to 150 PSI. The cylindrical design also allows it to be installed tighter up underneath the van, so you're not losing any clearance on your vehicle by adding the water heater underneath it, which is really great. And the final design consideration that's been updated is the insulation. So there's a new insulation layer in here that's gonna allow it to re retain heat for even longer. And then secondly, there are now check valves in the coolant loop. So this heater cannot lose heat back to the engine after you've stopped. So you're gonna be able to have hot water for longer with the new design. I'm gonna show you guys how to install this today and also we're gonna go over all the new features. The installation is not really that complicated, but there are a few key things that you must do correctly in order to have a successful installation and for your coolant system to work as it should. Let's take a look at what comes with the incline and the installation kit so you can make sure you understand all the parts. So first we have the incline unit itself and this will always ship, ship separately so you can buy it on its own or with the installation kit. If you do get the installation kit, what that's gonna come with are these two hangers. These are your brackets that you're gonna use to mount this to the underside of the van. It will come with your rib nuts and your setting tool. So you're, you're gonna have the correct rib nuts and the tool to put up your brackets. It will come with two adapters. These are for your, uh, your cold water in and your hot water out. Um, these are not installed on the unit when it comes simply because people use different types of connectors. We, we will include these ones that um, will work with the most common type of pipe, which is PEX-A. You're also going to get a couple of fittings. These are where you're gonna tap into the engine coolant loop. So underneath the hood of the van, you're gonna find the coolant loop and install these two 90s. These are installed with these Gates power grip clamps. Um, you use heat in order to connect this to the pipe. So rather than using um, a metal clamp where you turn it with a screwdriver, you'll just use these heat shrink clamps. It comes with eight of those. And then this is essentially a repair kit. Once you cut your coolant loop, if you want to repair it while you're on the road for whatever reason, you can eliminate this entire loop just with this one straight adapter and two of these uh, power clamps. We're also going to include this thermal expansion tank. This is extremely important anytime you have a hot water system that's under pressure. A thermal expansion tank is necessary to absorb some of the excess pressure that's gonna build up when the unit heats. We also will include some of these clamps. You'll use these underneath the van to secure the heater hose so that it's not dangling around. There'll be eight of those in the kit. Um, this is Mercedes approved coolant. So if you're doing this on a sprinter, you are gonna to need to add some extra coolant. This is more than enough. And we'll include this in the installation kit as well. And then finally, the heater hose. You'll get enough heater hose to install this in the most common locations under the van. Now there are a couple accessories that are not included, but you may wanna know about. A thermal mixing valve is important if you really need to make sure that you're never getting scalding water into your sink or your shower heads. Obviously your sink and shower should have their own mixer, but a, um, a temperature regulated mixer like this will make sure that the temperature coming out of the hot water pipe never exceeds about 120 degrees. The next thing is a heating element. So this is optional. Um, 110 volt eating, heating element can be installed um, on the end of the tank so that if you wanna heat with electricity, this is the unit that you would install. And then finally, a check valve. This is not included in the kit, 
But in order to keep this hot water from going back into the cold water line, you either have to install a check valve like this to make sure the cold water is only flowing into the unit and never out, um, or if you're gonna install a mixer like this, this actually performs the same function and only allows the cold water to go in and never the hot water to come back out. So let's take a look at the fittings that are on the incline unit here so you can understand what's going on before we start the installation. Um, here on the coolant loop side, we have the coolant going in and the coolant coming out of the unit. So this is what connects up to your engine coolant loop. Now something extremely important here is that these are check valves, so it only allows the coolant to flow in one direction, and that's to prevent this from losing heat back to the engine after you've stopped. So these are marked coolant in and coolant out. There's also arrows on the check valves, but extremely important, you need to get this part right, otherwise the coolant won't flow and you'll have issues. Um, this center part here, this is a pressure relief valve, so when you install it, this will be pointing straight down and this is set to 75 PSI, so if, if this starts to um, build up too much pressure, it will release some of the pressure as the hot water onto the ground here, um, thereby maintaining a proper operating temp temperature and pressure up to 75 PSI. On the other side, we have cold water in and hot water out. So the way this works, when it's installed, this is the orientation. The cold water goes in the bottom, and it's actually sent about halfway into the unit through a little internal tube, and then the hot water comes out here. So the hot water is going to generally settle to the top of the tank, so that's why the hot water should come out of the upper fitting. And then in the center here, right now this is plugged off, but this is where we'll put our heating elements um, so that we can heat this with electricity if we want to, either for freeze prevention or if we're plugged into shore power, the heating element will go in here and heat the unit even if you're not running the van. And the final piece to look at here is this drain plug. So this points straight down when it's installed and all this is is a plug that when you open it, all the water from the unit comes out. So if you need to service the unit or if you're concerned about it freezing, you would open up the drain plug here and then there will be no water. Before we get started on the installation, there are actually some things that I need to share with you guys to make sure that you have a successful installation and that your van operates normally after the unit is installed. First of all, this system is designed to work with a 50 PSI pump. That's probably the most common pressure rating for a pump that goes inside a van like this. But if you're using a pump that has a different pressure rating, then you need to set the pressure on this unit differently. So this comes pre-charged to 50 PSI to match up with a 50 PSI pump. Number two is freeze protection. So we get a lot of questions about this. You know, will the unit, since it's sitting outside of the van, will it freeze? And I would say it's really hard to freeze an incline unit if you've been driving the van at all in the past 24 to 48 hours. The water inside gets so hot that it's gonna take a really long time to freeze it, especially since it's an insulated tank. However, just like any part of your water system, if you're parking your van somewhere where it's really cold for multiple days, you need to be draining the water out of the incline unit, out of your pump, and potentially even out of your fresh water tanks. So this is a component that needs to be winterized, just like every other part of your water system. If you do have the heating element installed in your incline, you need to be careful not to run it when the incline is empty of water. The heating elements need to be submerged because if you turn power onto them and they're not submerged in water, they can burn out and they'll need to be replaced. Next, the thermal expansion tank is a required part of this system, so it definitely needs to be installed. It's really easy. All you need to do is put a T in your hot water line and install this into it. This is going to take the extra pressure that builds up when you have a pressurized incline heater with cold water and then you start to drive. It's gonna build up pressure. This tank is designed with a little bladder inside to accept that pressure so that it's not building up in the other parts of your, your water system, like your pipes and your pump, etc. So this is a must. The next thing is to fill the coolant lines with 
coolant before you hook them up to the engine loop. And the reason we're gonna do that is to get rid of all the air in the system because air bubbles in the coolant system can also cause problems. Normally they will work themselves out, but um, just to make sure that you're not introducing air on purpose is very important. The final thing that you really need to understand in order to have a successful installation is how to hook this up to the coolant system. There's definitely a right way to do it and any other way is going to cause you problems. So the most likely error you can make is to hook the coolant loop up to the wrong input and output on the incline. As I mentioned, there are check valves in there, and so if the, if the coolant is not allowed to flow, then you're gonna have problems. We're gonna go over this in detail during the installation, but I just wanna mention it now. Once the unit is installed, you wanna monitor your engine temperature for a thousand miles. Now, fortunately, the Sprinter has a great gauge on it where you can turn on the display and check your engine temperature but you're just gonna to wanna to make sure that there's no issues with your engine overheating. Once you're confident that is, everything is working right, you can basically stop monitoring it all the time, but it's really important to keep an eye on it, especially when the unit is new. So of course, guys, if you're not confident with the installation, this would be a great product to take to a professional installer. For them, it's gonna be pretty easy, and we certainly don't wanna have any issues with your van or with your engine or the unit. So consider a professional installer if you're not feeling totally confident. And then finally, check for leaks, both in the coolant system and on the water lines. Once the unit is installed, I would do that for the first couple of weeks just to make sure you have no leaks whatsoever. Now we can move on to the actual installation of this on the Sprinter.